Good morning, happy Bowtie Friday. Today on ETH Build, we're checking out smart contracts. So we've uh, done hashes, key pairs, ledgers, blockchains, transactions. Now it's time to kind of bring it all together with smart contracts. So what, what we're gonna be able to do is not just send a transaction on chain, but we're gonna send code to the blockchain that can be executed. Oh, it's so cool, it's so exciting. Okay, so here is our contract. We just have this contract called Hello World. Name doesn't really matter, but let's put some storage in here first. Let's just start by just figuring out kind of just some basics, right? So let's just create a string. We'll make it public and uh, we'll call it owner, right? And we'll just set it uh, uh, in, in uh, set it, just hard code it, right? Okay, so now I can click to deploy this. Let's dig into this. So first of all, I have a wallet. It has funds, <clears throat> it's on a private key, you already know that if you've seen episode two. Uh, if we get into the deployer, it's basically sending a transaction, just like we learned about in the transactions episode, but I kind of alluded at the end to this data field. We're, we're, we're gonna send a transaction and it's not gonna go to anyone. So the two address is empty, but the data field, that, that extra field that goes along with it is gonna be feel, filled with bytecode. So we're gonna take a contract, we're gonna compile it into bytecode, then we're gonna put that bytecode into a transaction and send it to no one. And the blockchain, the Ethereum blockchain, happens to just uh, uh, basically arbitrarily say, okay, that means that that is code that can be executed. So let's go ahead and do it. So I'm gonna deploy that, basically compile and deploy. Now this is the address of that contract. So a contract has an address just like you do when you're sending stuff around, right? Very cool. So uh, let's go talk to the contract, right? So if we were to query the blockchain and ask it who the owner is, it's going to tell us that the owner is Hal, right? Because we hard coded it. Let's change this to uh, Holly instead. And let's ask it, oh, we're gonna have to redeploy, right? Because it's a const. Okay, so we'll deploy, we'll get a new address. Yes, and we'll query that, and it's Holly. Okay, cool. Let's just go ahead and kind of, uh, we'll, we'll figure that out in a second. Okay, so now uh, let's let's make a function. Let's actually interact with it, right? Okay, so we'll create a function called set owner that is public. Anybody can interact with it. Okay, and what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna set the owner to something, right? We could, I mean, we could just set it to something, but instead of dealing with strings, let's, let's start working with actual, uh, addresses instead. So this is going to be the public address. It's going to be an owner of, we'll, we'll call it like the owner of this contract, right? This contract's going to go on chain and it's going to have an owner and anybody can call the set owner function. Now here's the next thing. There's this thing called message.sender. So uh, you can send money in a transaction. You can deploy a contract by sending a transaction to no one with the spike code in it but then you can interact with a contract by sending a transaction to the contract Woo! with with some data in, in the, the, the call data, the, byte, the, the data field, right? So this message.sender is actually the person who sent the transaction to the contract. So we're gonna put a contract up there and we're gonna allow anyone to call set owner and whoever the signer is of that transaction will become the owner of our contract. Okay, let's try it out. So let's deploy this bad boy. We should get a new address, okay. And if we were to ask it for the owner, it's just going to give us zeros, right? It's basically the uh, the zero, it's it's an address with all zeros. Okay, and let's, let's now go ahead and automate this. I feel like this is gonna get old clicking on that. Okay, but now we have this new function and it's called set owner. So set owner is actually a function on our contract. So how do we call a function on a contract? Well. What is this? It's, it's, it's like this hex string. Okay, so here's what it is. So if I were to take the hash of the string set owner, look at that, it lines right up. Look at those first, what is it? The first uh, four bytes, the first eight characters there, those first eight hexadecimal characters, basically the hash of the function that we're gonna call. So it's sort of like just uh, like an indicator of what we want to call, so we put that we'll put this hex into a transaction. So I happen to have this handy transactor module, but all it does is just send transactions to something with the value with some data. Okay, so we'll plug in our set owner in the data, 
And we're going to need a number, we'll just set it to zero right now because we're not going to send any value in this transaction, right? It's a valueless transaction. So we're sending a transaction, but no ETH is actually, you know, moving from, from party to party other than the gas that we pay. We'll get into that later. But uh, the to address, okay, is going to be our contract address, okay? All right, so we're going to send a transaction to our contract with no value with the data being just this function, basically the hash, hash of this function call. Okay, so let me hook a button up to this. And as soon as I hit that button up, it's gonna fire the first transaction. All right, there we go. So uh, we just put a transaction on chain to call set owner. Now, if we go ask this thing who the owner is, it's not zeros anymore. It's our, it's our account, right? I, and if, if I get into here and look at uh, my address, it's gonna be the same address. Oh, it's this address. All right, 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 this guy, this is my address, and this is now the owner of the contract, right? Those things are equal. Awesome. Okay, so we, we've set up storage, and we've been able to change that storage, but uh, this contract could actually just be claimed by anyone, so let's, let's go ahead and change this a little bit. Let's turn this into the constructor, okay? So this time, it's going to be basically when the contract is deployed, it's going to run this function. So now let's go ahead and deploy that, and we'll see that I am the owner already, right? And just to test this, we'll, we'll do a quick little, watch this, we're going to say address this instead. Okay, so then what we're going to do in the constructor is we're going to set the owner to itself. All right, let's go ahead and send that out and see what happens. What we should see is the contract is deployed to here, and when we ask for the owner, look at that. It's itself. So it basically owns itself, sort of. I, I don't know. I don't know. Just proving that this is working. I'm going to pull this out. We're going to set the owner to me right away, and we're good to go. Now, okay, so we're talking about programmable money here, right? We're moving money around. We've got, we've got this uh, smart contract out on all these decentralized miners that we can interact with. Uh, in, in a deterministic manner, let's move some money around, right? So let's create a function called deposit, right? That makes sense. And uh, we won't have them put in any arguments yet, but this function will be payable, okay? So it's, I think it's public payable, right? Okay, so now we have this function that is in our contract that we'll deploy that allows people to send money to it. This payable uh, says, okay, like this function can accept value also. So what we want to do is let's keep track of some kind of integer that is maybe the amount or the balance or something like that, right? And what we'll do is whenever somebody sends in money, we'll increment our amount by the message.value. So remember message.sender was the person who signed the, the transaction message.value will be the uh, the person that, ooh, did that compile? Uh, oh, ooh, 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 that's a funny mistake. We're going with it. First take, Griffith, pop, here we go. Compiled, ready to go. All right, so now we have a deposit function that allows people to put money in and will increment some kind of counter that tells us how much money is in there. We can always just check the balance, but we're we're going with it here. All right, so now we deployed it. Uh, it's owned by, it should be owned by us, right? Oh, oh, something's detached uh, because we added some new things here. So the owner, now if we ask for that, it should be us, okay. And now we've got this function called deposit, okay. And we're going to deposit 100 way and send. Okay, okay, okay. There we go. Now let's, now what we want to do is ask, just like we're asking for who the owner is, let's start asking for what the amount is. And we can see that that is 100. Cool. So now we're able to deploy this, this, this contract to a bunch of decentralized miners and interact with it by sending transactions to it on chain. And within those transactions, I'm sending value. Right? So I'm sending money, I'm depositing money in, and I'm keeping track of it with this amount. So, so like t just a few lines of code compiled to bytecode and shipped out in a transaction, and we're interacting with this smart contract in, out, out in the sky, right? Super, super awesome. Okay, so 
if we can deposit, we probably want to withdraw. Okay, and that will also be a uh, public. Let's make sure we uh, get the L in there. The, that'll be a public function. Uh, it won't be payable. Anybody can call it. And what are we going to do? We're going to send them all the amount, right? So what we'll do is message.sender.transfer the amount. Okay. Okay. Oh, 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 and we probably should set amount to zero, right? And there's some... If, if you know about reentrance, you're probably getting some goosebumps here, but we're going to forget about all that. We'll get to all sorts of cool security stuff later. Uh, basically, uh, okay, so like contracts can talk to each other, and in this case, you could put a contract in here, or the message.sender could be another contract, and that contract could call back in, and we could get stuck in this loop where it's continuously, we'll get to recur or uh, reentrance later. It's fascinating. But let's uh, let's deploy this bad boy. So now we can deposit and then after depositing for a while, we can withdraw. So if we go over here and we ask it for the amount at zero, let's let's run the, the deposit a few times. And let's actually get this kind of, let's see, let's reorganize this a little bit. This will be, this will be our deposit. Uh, let's just go with it, it's fine, it makes sense. Okay, so uh, we're, we're able to deposit funds, but now what we need to do is withdraw funds. So we'll kind of get this this same setup we have going on here. Uh, we'll grab this guy, and it'll just be zero. We'll grab our transactor, and we'll plug in our zero value. We'll plug in our withdraw, which is a different hash, uh, into there. And then the to address will be, of course, our smart contract. Okay, so we're going to send another transaction to our smart contract that tells it that we would like to call the withdraw function. Okay, and as soon as I hook that up, it's gonna fire that transaction off, and we just call the withdraw, and look at that, it's zero. So let's go through it a couple times, so let's deposit, 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 those are three transactions all going to the contract, and we've got 300 in there, and then withdraw, okay, I totally do want these buttons up here. Oh yeah, okay. So this button will be our deposit button. And this button will be our withdraw button. And it pulls our money back, right? So we're able to deploy this contract. We'll, we're able to put money in it. it. It operates on whatever logic we code in here. And then we're able to withdraw those funds out. Very, very, very cool. The, the, already the possibilities are just opening up here, right? A lot of really, really fun stuff. Okay, so. Now, uh, what we want to do here, uh, we, we, should, we should think about kind of accounts here, right? Like an, a, a smart contract is just in another account, just like my private key pair, right? So, so it's just an address that you can send to. But right now, if you were to send funds, and let's, let's set that up to, uh, where's our transactor? Okay, let's just say we wanted to send money directly to the contract. So it would be, the address would be two. And then we'd put in, uh, some amount that we wanted to send in, and then uh, some kind of data, which, oops, in the data field, we're going to send nothing, right? This this will be this will be empty. It'll be, you know, 0x, just like an empty uh, hexadecimal string, hex string. Okay, so uh, we're going to try to send, we're going to try to send 100 way to this contract, and I think it's going to fail. Yeah, it did. It, the, the VM revert, reverted. And what happened here is money went to here, and it the EVM said he's trying to send money to this contract. Now, I can't just put it in here because there's this, this thing called a fallback function, okay? And a fallback function is basically if someone calls a transaction on this smart contract and it doesn't have any data, like it doesn't have a function call, it's 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 going to end up in uh, what's called the fallback function, which uh, I can just do, I think, fallback like that. And then uh, let's make it public external. Uh, oh, no, no, not public external. Uh, I think external payable. So external is like public private, means that it can, can't be called by another contract. It has to be called by an external account. And uh, payable means that they can send money. Okay, now this should actually work, right? 
Right, and what we'll do is just have it call deposit. Okay, I think this should work. I think we should be able to deploy this, and now what's really cool is people will be able to send ETH directly to the contract. And let's double check that right here by sending 100 in. I think it went. There we go, 100. Okay, so this is really cool because then you, it's, it's like when you're building a dApp, you don't have to have all this you know, uh, uh, complicated buttons and stuff like that. You can basically just have someone send you money using whatever wallet they want. N nothing specific has to happen. You can just give them an address and they can send money there and that, that money will be caught uh, in this fallback function and it will deposit it normally, okay? Very cool, but we have a big problem here. And our big problem is that basically anybody can withdraw these funds, right? Anybody can come along and send a transaction with with this withdraw as the data and the 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 miner's going to receive that transaction and he's going to say okay this person wants to call it he wants to call this withdraw i'm going to send him all the money so anybody can get in and take all the money out of our contract so what we need to do is start building some rules into this right to tell the miner okay you you must require these things to happen and, and it's called require so we will require that the message dot sender which would we, we've already learned uh, is the person that sends the transaction has to be equal to the owner, right? And if he's not, not the owner, boop, boop, boop. Okay, so now when someone tr calls withdraw, we're gonna do a check. And just like in, in all the crypto stuff we've already learned about signing and recovering, we can, using cryptography, determine exactly who the person is that signed that transaction, and we can say, is that signer equal to the owner of this contract? And if not, we will fail and we won't let them uh, make this withdrawal. Okay, let's deploy this bad boy. Oh, oh, what we wanna do is set it so we're not the owner. So let's go back to the, the whole uh, address this thing and we'll make the contract the owner itself, basically uh, making it so impossible for us to withdraw, right? So. So here's our contract, and basically it's requiring only the sender. So basically only this contract calling itself could withdraw. So basically we're just gonna lock this money up. We're not putting it on the main net, we're just putting on a test net. But uh, we'll see that change, okay? And we can deposit some funds in there. And the owner, the owner of the contract is itself. There's money in there, but if we try to call our withdraw, what's gonna happen? Not the owner. And by the way, getting getting revert messages, welcome welcome to 2020, blockchain developers, because you didn't used to be able to do that, and it was very hard to debug smart contracts. All right, but it's working now, right? We can we can sort of with with mild confidence, and you you'd really want to study this and and test it. You you want to build tests, lots of tests for your smart contracts, but with with mild confidence, I can say that I could probably put some money in this thing on the main net and, and feel okay about it. Uh, I really have to look at it a little bit longer, but really, we, you know, we want to look at this require function. We want to kind of think of the game theory here. Can anybody get in here? But basically, where's the owner set? The owner is only ever set on constructor, and it's the person who deploys it. So I can be like pretty certain, and and like deterministically certain at some point, right? That that only the person who deployed this contract is going to be able to get money out of it. And, and that's pretty awesome. And let's go ahead and deploy that. And let's go over here and make sure this all works. So we want to, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of all this stuff just to clean up. But we will deposit some funds. Okay. And we're the owner, so when we hit withdraw, hopefully we pull the money out. Come on, come on, woo woo! All right, cool. All right, all right, all right. So, a few last closing things here uh, would be, well, you know, what, what, what other data types? Whatever, whatever. You can have structs. You can have all sorts of stuff. You'll, you just have to kind of do, do some, do some research on Solidity because there's so many cool things you can do here. But I want to hit on uh, one other thing, and it's, I'm basically just going to clean this whole contract up. Uh, what's called a mapping. So it's going to kind of break things for a second. But what you can do is have a mapping from, let's just say, an address pointing to some uint. And this will be a public balance. Okay? So now we have a balance. We don't need a constructor. And we'll have a deposit and a withdraw. Okay, but what happens here is when they deposit, 
what we'll do is we'll set the balance for just the message dot sender plus equal the message dot value. Okay. And let's clean that up. Cool. Okay, so now what we're doing is for any given address, we're keeping track of a balance. So, so anyone can deposit funds in here, and it will keep track of those funds in individually for each address. And you can deposit the same way. Uh, but then if you want to withdraw, we don't need to w w worry about w requiring it because we have this mes message.sender. So what we'll do is we will transfer to the message.sender their balance. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead, what, what really, just to avoid that re-entrance, I'm going to set their balance to zero. So what we need to do is kind of have a, an amount equal to that balance. Okay, so we get their balance, we set it to zero, and then we transfer it. Uh, and that's the whole re-entrance thing, Google re-entrance. It's, it's wonderful. I'm sure we'll get into it later uh, in the curriculum. Uh, here we go. Okay, so now we have a smart contract that instead of just keeping one one owner and one uh, balance, basically we're gonna keep a balance for anyone who comes along and we're gonna let anyone deposit funds and anyone withdraw funds. So basically we just set up this contract that lets people put money and take money out. Pretty red though, like if you think about the implications there, like all sorts of logic that you could put into this contract, but let's go ahead and deploy it. Okay, so some things are gonna change here. Now the balance function is going to require a, uh, it's gonna ask us for an address. So we need to put our address in there. And now the balance should give us zero. Okay, cool. And there is no owner anymore, so we're not really worried about any of that stuff. Okay, so we're getting the balance. Uh, let's, let's go ahead and deposit. We should be able to deposit, I think should be all the same. We can see the R balance now. So, so now it's not a balance for the whole contract, it's a balance for just our account. We can see our account balance will go up and then when we're ready we can withdraw and hopefully that goes down, it does. Okay, so any given account, you generate a key pair, throw some ETH in it, send a transaction to this contract out in the ether and you can put money in it and get money out and it works sort of cryptographically backed. Super, super, super fun. Uh, I think one last little thing, oh, oh what, what we should talk about here is basically we just, this is how a token works, right? So so you can send around ETH, but then there's tokens that, that run on top of the network, right? Like if you go to CoinMarketCap, you'll see a whole bunch of tokens. A lot of those are actually what's called ERC-20, which was a standard that we created once once we had kind of like, oh, okay, contracts, we can store stuff, we can send stuff, we got these mappings. Let's Let's like put a transfer function in here, right? So it would be like, we're keeping track of balances, right? But then like maybe we have a function called transfer that is like to an amount, right? And then what it does is just subtract my balance and add to the other guy's balance. And now we can transfer. Oh man, we just, we just the first application running on blockchain is, is, is money, right? And, and you can do that with just a few lines of solidity. Very, very, very powerful stuff. Uh, one, one last thing thing uh, is events, right? So say I have this event called withdraw and I want to have it output an address of who and a uint of amount and I'm going to put that in right here. So the message.sender is the who and the amount is our amount. Okay, so what, what am I doing here? So let's let's say we we've written a, a decentralized application, and that application is watching uh, this this contract, and it's allowing people to deposit and withdraw. If we wanted to kind of keep track of people withdrawing or depositing, uh, we we would basically have to like follow all the transactions and watch it closely, and we would see the we would see the balance. We could we could query at any time what someone's balance is, but being able to just quickly query how many people have withdrawn is kind of impossible until, well, it's not impossible, it's hard, very hard because you have to look, you have to know all the transactions. But there's this nice thing called an event. And an event is sort of like storage on the blockchain, but relatively cheap compared to real storage. So this is real storage, this, this balance that, oh gosh, what did I do? This balance we have here is real storage. This, this is very, it's 
very expensive to store stuff on blockchain because you've got all these different miners that all have to hold it deterministically. But we can fire these events that technically are storage on chain, but the contracts can't read the events. The events are just fired off and it's, it's for uh, external things to read and get information from it. So let's go ahead and deploy this. I think it's all good. Let's see if, uh, is it broken? Let's see where we are. Uh, it looks like it's deploying. There we go. Okay, so it is changing. Uh, and let's do a deposit and withdraw. So let's deposit a little bit. Oh, our balance isn't. Let's grab our address so we know that. Our balance should be 100. Let's do another one. And then let's do a withdraw, and it should pull it out. But say you wanted to show that in an application, what you want to do is follow these events, right? So what I can do is ask for the withdraw event and we'll just ask for that and it should give us a list of every time withdraw was called and in here we can see who and how much they withdrew. Awesome, so, so much cool stuff we, we jammed on here but it's basically like storage and then function calls and then payable functions and fallback functions and then we have require statements that Basically, everything has to be executed uh, atomically or everything rolls back. If any require function fails, everything rolls back. Then we've, then we've got events for us to watch. And then we've got this mapping. And, th and that mapping is really interesting because it allows us to uh, store a value for any given other value. It's kind of an uh, uh, interesting structure, but it works perfect for if you wanted to have a token with a balance. Awesome. Smart contracts on ETH.build. Thanks for coming along. Happy Bowtie Friday. See you.